Greg Stevens. Here at Vintage Honeycomb Radiator Company, I'm going to take you from the process of flat, sixth hour copper, right through to finished core. The core we're making today is a 1929 Buick. I'm going to walk you through the process of making Vintage Honeycomb core. From the very first raw product material, which is the flat copper on a roll, straight through, through the machine, through the guillotine, cutting the length, the lock seaming, the assembly, the dip, and then you'll see the stripping down of the radiator and the rebuilding of the new radiator and the comparisons. We start with the raw material which is copper which is made specifically for the job for the Lovata Mill in Sweden. I have it imported in a 12 inch master roll, it is slit to my size to requirements. We have 2 inch, 2 and a quarter, 2 and a half, 3, 3 and a half and 4 inch. You can see the rolls underneath the stock. These rolls are then set on the machine two at a time, on the machine like so. In the bath we have a dipping and rolling oil, that simply lubricates the copper, it stops dragging, also lubricates the dies as it goes through. Here we have a tension plate, this tension plate simply just retains the tension on the copper so it doesn't jerk off the rolls and through the machine. It has constant tension on the spring. This is a little rotary press, what it does as it rotates via the clutch, it rotates here and the bottom die comes up. And as it comes up and we're in the rolling action, it picks the copper up, presses it and moves it through. So as it rolls continually, it just keeps picking up and moving. Okay, so this little machine is built in Sydney in 1930. It used to be operated by Johnson Brothers at the same address from where I bought it in Parramatta Road, Ashfield. We've extensively restored the machinery, uh, rebushed it, re Red bearing, new motor, new gearbox, everything that had to be done. Inside here, we have a tapered cone cast iron clutch, much like veteran cars actually, which when you pull the lever, it engages it. The, the weight of the flywheel keeps it going basically. So, as you can see from the die, every time it comes up, it rotates and pushes it through. So, after the material's pressed, you'll see it's two layers at a time. It comes through this little guillotine. This little guillotine is part of the original equipment. It's been rebuilt and restored. But it's indexed. Now it's indexed for different reasons, which you'll, you'll see. As I explained, the copper is done in two layers at a time. So here you split it, there's two layers of copper. This little index guillotine, which is part of the original equipment, it slides it back and forward. So it locks there, it'll cut there or there. So that's all to do with the assembly dimples on the core. You'll see, if you take a close-up of this, you'll see that you've got male dimples down this side and a male-female dimple here. They're to do with the assembly process of the core, which we'll touch on as we go. So, when we're cutting this from the guillotine, we go through once, we move that back, and we'll go through a backstop. So there's a backstop there, and we'll cut that there. So, that's one. We'll set that again, that cuts it again, and we keep going through. So as we go through, we just keep duplicating until we build our pile up. So when we get enough of these, we'll move on. Once the material comes off the guillotine, I pick it up two layers at a time, two pieces. And I'll look at the dimples. Once again, I want the male dimples and the male female. So what we want in the lock seamer, the male dimples face each other at the back of the lock seamer. So one goes in like that, this one turns end for end, they match. This one goes in the machine like that, I simply hold it back. As I pull the handle forward, it clamps it. And what that does is a double roll lock seam. Again, the male dimples face each other in the back. Simple action. Marvellous piece of machinery built in 1930. Well, it's like history, it's the same everywhere. I'm saying it's 1930s, and I believe it's the 1930s until someone can prove differently. Everything has a history. Someone else will know more than I do, but I wish, if anybody knows more about it, Johnson Brothers Radiators, Ashfield, Sydney, please let me know. 
So, on this particular core, this 1929 Buick, we'll look at the build sheet. Okay, so on the core build sheet, we've got the year, the make, the shape, the height, the width. It's going to be 483 wide, so all I do is simply divide the 483 by 9.3 millimetres and I come up with a number of 52. That's what I call my pitch number, so I need 52 tubes. Once again, I'll pick them up, male dimples face the back. For the sake of quality assurance, I'll take one occasionally and I'll bring it around here to my marvellous craft light. The ladies will recognise this for your sewing. Once it's under this light, I magnify it, I can look at my double roll lock seam and I can be happy that I've got full coverage. Okay, once my tubes are done, I'll take them over here and I'll put this little machine here. What this does is just reshape the dimple. When I have this cleanable dimple pushed into the copper, the lock seamer will sometimes knock that dimple back up. I'll show you one that has been done. See, these have been flattened out. This is slightly protruding slightly high, this little machine over here just puts that shape back in there simply just to give me security to know that it's fine. Some reassurance. So all this does here is this has been cut to the shape of the tube. That just slides on there like that, a little backstop. So once I take that off there, I'm happy with that. That's the tube. Two pieces off the machine through the guillotine separated, reverse, back the front, lock seam together and then put through the little machine. Then we have one single sheet which is called a fin. I'll explain that as we go. But that simply is inserted in the tube. Let's do some. We'll do three or four. I'll put that there. Just a matter of opening up, inserting the fin That's fine. Uh, and I'll turn that over, put that on top of there, and then if we come close, we'll see we are starting to get a honeycomb shape. There we go. So there we are, there's three. That's enough for you to recognise what we're looking for, which is the honeycomb. There it is there. We clamp that together, there's your honeycomb. There's your lock seams. Your tubes, your fin, your tube, your fin. Three. Now, what you're looking at that way is the air side of the radiator. That's the air side. That's the, water. the air goes through there. That's what we recognise at the front of the car. The water actually runs down between the tubes through here. So this is the water side. Top tank fits on there. That's the air side. So what we've done there is created some honeycomb for. So what we do with those three that we've just made and I'm showing you, we'll take it over to the stacking bench. So we pick them up, they roll as they come over and they land on here. That's my stacking bench. So you'll see some that I've done earlier. What we need to do again, we need to go back to the core build sheet. I know this core is 486 millimetres. We're not there yet. But on either side of the core I have a brass strip. You'll see the brass in here. The brass strip simply goes there. This clamping frame comes down and we clamp that together. So once I compress that, squeeze it up, I'll lower the bench. Grab my concreting float and we simply tap this. To 
assure that it's flat and level. I'll grab my tape measure. I know I'm short, but I'll eventually want 486. But that's basically how we build the core up. We just keep building until we get the right height.